This is South Harbour Boulevard in Anaheim, Southern California, which is literally, as you can see, at an entrance to the world famous original Disneyland. This particular entrance is used mainly by pedestrians and Disneyland shuttle transportation, and there are several other entrances, including the parking lots and hotels. We're now on Disney property and this is the main pedestrian walkway that will take you straight up to the gates of two top theme parks and downtown Disney. Once through the turnstiles, you get the first glimpse of Disneyland and the first thing you're going to see is the train station. The first port of call is the town square and the building just in front of you is the city hall. This is where you go for any park information as well as any guest services that you might require. <laughs> This building is the Emporium, which is also situated in a similar place at other Disneyland resorts.
This is the original Disneyland castle, which was designed by Walt himself, and it stands at 77 feet, whereas the Cinderella castle in Disney World reaches 189 feet. There are several lands within the park, and this is Tomorrowland. That's where the old people mover ride used to be and just above was the old rocket rods which has now been replaced by the Astra Orbiter which we've just seen. There's a lot in this park that's been here for a very very long time and it's remained pretty much unchanged in a lot of the areas. This is a ride attraction that you'll also find at other Disney parks, Autopia it's called. And although the cars are guided by a central rail, there's still a freedom of movement within. This was an original ride that eventually closed but reopened many years later with a Finding Nemo theme. It's a good idea as the submarines don't actually submerge. The passengers climb down to a viewing area just below the water where they've all hidden things that can only be seen from the ride itself. And I'll show you that in a later upload. Landscaping is really, really good and a lot of fine attention to detail is, is worth looking out for. This is the Tomorrowland monorail station, which will take you straight to downtown Disney and back again if you decide to stay on. It's a complete loop system.
this planet. This is the facade of It's a Small World, which is a boat ride and takes you around the world with all singing and dancing marionettes and colourful scenery. There's something you won't see in the Walt Disney World's Magic Kingdom, and that's all those mountains in the background. You can even see snow on the peaks. I've actually seen photographs of Walt Disney himself driving this particular engine. It was originally built by the Walt Disney Studios in 1954 and then went on to take passengers in this particular park in 1955. That's a real paddle steamer out there, known as the Mark Twain. And although it's not operating at this point in time, they are allowing guests on board just to have a look around. It holds quite a large amount of people, and it does have no less than three floors. One of the top all-time favourites in any of the Disneyland parks is the Big Thunder Mountain Railway. It's classed as a coaster of sorts and has three inclines. The ride's quite different than most roller coasters as this one tends to work more on 
twists and turns rather than extreme drops. But it's still popular and always has been. Theming is so good, even down to the little stalls that sell ice cream, popcorn, drinks, and other things. And here's another all time favourite with the younger guests the Flying Dumbos, which works on exactly the same principle as the Astro Orbiter in Tomorrowland. It's all hydraulic air pressure that gives the individual control over the ride. Still in fantasy land, and we're aboard the canal boats of Storybook Land, which is a type of model village. Everywhere here in Story of the Clan. Even in the plants made small through the enchantment of Tinkerbell, they would never, ever, ever have to grow up. That's just part of what made this place a favorite of Master Storyteller Walt Disney and continues to inspire you too. Now we're just entering into the gold now. That's when the sun is either rising or in this case setting. It does give a beautiful golden glow and a very different look to everything. The Astro Orbiter here is exactly the same principle as the Flying Dumbo ride. And again, the theming and detail is so, so good.
well it'll soon be nightfall and that's when the park takes on a completely different atmosphere uh, with good use of lighting. There's something quite nice about walking around a theme park at night and in the rain. So what better place than the original Disneyland park here in Southern California. Initially I had hoped that tonight was going to be somewhat dry. But as it turned out I found myself buying an umbrella. Now I don't know if anyone has ever tried this but it's not that easy holding a camera in one hand and an umbrella in the other as this particular camera isn't in any way, shape or form, as far as I know, waterproof. Besides, I also don't want any water to get on the lens, as it will spoil the shots. There's lots of little nooks and crannies here to explore. Quite often it's possible to miss a lot of these scenery surrounding you. But then that's kind of what the Disney parks are all about. To overwhelm you with so much happening everywhere you look. There's a lot of Star Wars thing in the rides in this area. So it's always good to know for anyone who is on holiday or vacation here that the parks don't close, so you'll not be disappointed whatever time of the year or the weather. There's several themed areas to the park, including Fantasyland, Adventureland, Frontierland, and this one, Tomorrowland. Believe it or not, this park is a fair bit smaller than the Magic Kingdom at Walt Disney World. However, it does have many more rides very, very cleverly integrated around each other. Whereas in Florida's Walt Disney World, they have four parks and plenty of room to distribute rides throughout. Even the Space Mountain has a Star Wars theme in. It's becoming very popular again. At the submarine area, 
all themed on the Finding Nemo animation, where most of the viewing is underwater. Something else I'll eventually get to upload for you. There you go, that sound is the rain hitting my umbrella. Now and then you'll most likely spot it getting into some of the shots. There's the sub boarding station. It's all very cleverly worked out. There's a good shot of the monotrain. They operate right up until the park closes. There's two stations, one right here in the park at the south and the other at downtown Disney. There's a lot of people wearing ponchos tonight. I know the white ones can be bought on Disney property. And you do have more freehand movement than you do with an umbrella. Main Street not only looks good in the day, but at night it takes on another world of its own. And all the lights give a golden glow everywhere. Main Street is a collection of various types of retail. This is one of the places you can go to for gifts. They also have jewelry, candies, bakery, restaurants, ice cream parlor, and even a barber shop. Well, that's it for the day. 
I hope you enjoyed the little tour of Disneyland and in the pouring rain. Don't forget to subscribe and check out my channel for other similar uploads. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you all very soon on YouTube. Bye.